Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and today we have some bits of excitement. What's this? Well, we have a new Max LUR and we've also got a new EQ Professional. Now it's a special manufactured in 2020. So we've got two things here which uh, could be new tapes or might not be new tapes or I don't know but let's get to the nitty gritty so these are Japanese only now we know that the UR in Europe and America has been discontinued and basically they're, they're not going to be doing anymore and I've heard that you know in the shelves in America they're disappearing here in the UK they're disappearing and Maxell Europe have said they don't plan on doing any more cassettes so what are these if we look the, the thing is 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 these are called UR60N and people have been speculating does that mean new? Well I don't know because like all Japanese companies that I've contacted I'm not Japanese so I'm not worthy of any sort of response whatsoever. If it's not Japanese doesn't matter and if you're Japanese and taking offence to this tough shit I've found that Japanese companies are the most xenophobic unfriendly companies going. I've contacted many. Maxell, TDK, Nagoka, um, who else did I chance? You know, and when I was in video games I used to contact them as well and they, they give you an autoresponder saying thank you for your mail and they'd never get back to you ever again. You're not worthy, you're not Japanese, you're not worth bothering with and that's how it is. So say that I'm being racist if you want but I worked for Hitachi for over a decade and I can say this because I saw it firsthand. Okay so anyhow rant over. So these might be new, these might be old but new wrapper let's have a look at the tape in them now these ones I can't say where these have come from now there's two caveats on these the first one is this isn't the final product a lot of people have seen these when I post them on my Facebook or in the uh, community on YouTube and said they look amateur and they don't look good and that's what it gets to me that it's like let's let's do the roll call shall we we want new tapes you get new tapes, RTM Fox, Splicit Capture, etc. Oh, if only there were a 90, I'd, I'd buy them. So you've got RTM doing a 90. You've got these in a 90, which I posted up. Um, oh, they're ugly. If only they were better looking, I'd buy them. And so they make these better looking for you. So it's a 90 that's brand new and good looking. Are you buying them? Uh, if only they were cheaper than I can get a default. I think anybody launching a brand new cassette hasn't done any market research. They don't know the market. The hundreds of splice it captures which I've got still in stock, which I got at cost price because I thought that's what you guys wanted has proven that the market doesn't want a new cassette. The market wants new cassettes to batter down the prices of new old stock cassettes, which is what people really want to buy. It's as simple as that. But this isn't too bad for this one because these guys are duplicators and they've told me I can't tell you who they are. Some of you might have guessed, some of you might know, but I've been told by them I can't tell you who they are. But they developed this tape because they run out of tape for their duplication business and the current Chinese stock isn't good enough as we know. It's pretty terrible. But they've worked with a Chinese company and they say this is a brand new tape that they've developed in China. They say that they've compared it well with this. Oh, I forget off the top of my hand, but it's the Sai Han duplicator stock that they were using. They've compared it to and it compares well and they reckon it compares better than the RTM Fox and Splicit Capture. Eh, you know, <laughs> we had Nax say that their tape was a super ferric and a type 2 killer. So take what a company marketing as a tape actually says with a grain of salt. This is the other thing as well. These have been sent to me because I've got this channel. Now this is a caveat, the most important one. Normally when I've done, you know, the RTM Fox or I've done the Knack or I've done the Splicer or I did the Nagoka or the Soundwaves, somebody else bought them for me. I didn't buy them. I got somebody else to buy them so that people wouldn't say, oh, it's going to Tonyville or it's going to be reviewed and you get a reviewer special tape, i.e. they put some good new old stock tape in it and you review it and say, oh, it's fantastic and it's not what the final product is. So the caveat on this is, 
I don't know if this is a reviewer special. I have no reason to believe it is, but I can't guarantee you this. So I will do a follow up on these when the actual production version is released and the production version apparently is going to be in a clear shell they're using this white one because the clear shells they've got can't actually hold a 90 properly because this is a 90 um yeah you know, it's a c90 brand new c90 so it will be in a clear shell so when that happens i will do a follow-up review i'll get someone else to buy me some and I'll do a follow up and see if the tapes match and then I can officially give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whichever way. So these are the new tapes. So the URs only come in five packs and uh, that five pack is actually sold. Somebody's bought that one already. So I'll show you what they look like individually. And again, this is a, a UR90. Now the words are not minimal. I mean, you know, if you look at the Sony Niege mini discs, they're minimal, clear and white. You know, blame Apple, but that's what it looks like. Pretty minimal. It's, even though it's got this writing area on there, and they, and they show on the back of the pack, you know, it's like, oh, you can write straight on it. Um, well, incidentally, one of these says these are made in Indonesia, so these are going to be Pangung again. So you can either write straight on it, or they have put you some blank labels in. And again, the J card is what the J card is. So... It doesn't look high spec, but then doesn't need to really. Like I say, it is plain. But it's got the classic Maxell hubs on it. It's got the Maxell leader. And if we compare it to the, this is the generation last of the Maxell UR, which was the Japanese one. Slightly different J card, but it's, uh, the same shell, at least the screwed, the screwed shells, you know what I mean, same leaders. And let's just compare it to the last of line European one. Now here's the thing about this tape, yeah. Um, I think this is an attractive tape. I really do. The only reason this isn't thought of as being a, a good looking tape is because of the ubiquity of it. But I think as a tape, it looks great. The clear shell's nice. I like the ridges on the clear shell, it adds some dimension. You've got the classic Maxell hubs, and I like the little red features there. It's just a nice looking tape. I think it looks a lot better than this one, put it that way. So let's just put these tapes together now. Oh, look, slightly different colours on the leaders. The arrows are different colours. But um, put Mr. Bick in. And it's funny this, right? Um, someone commented another one that said, oh, congrats on using an old school BIC which has the BIC logo embossed on it as opposed to it being printed. I, I, I didn't know that they did that. And it's amazing that there's someone that's up on BICs, but there we go. So let's have a look at these, wind them on. And these are all pretty much the same. Now, if we look, got three different colors of tape there. This one, which is the last Japanese Max LUR, and this one, which is the last European Max LUR, if you look, the tapes in those look pretty similar, don't they? Pretty similar colour. I mean, it's the angle, but it's a sort of, let's have a see if we can get about it. They look, they look very similar colour. If we look at this new one, it's much browner. It's a, it's a deeper sort of tan colour, so it's a different colour tape there than these two. So, is this a newly developed tape? Have Pangung gone and found someone in China? Have they, you know, developed it themselves? Or did they just find more new old stock stuff and they were holding it back for the Japanese market and said, hey, you know what, there's a, a bigger market for it here in Japan, so we're going to stop selling it in Europe and leave it for the Japanese tapes. Who knows on this one? So, yeah, so that's what they look like. Now, this EQ Professional, like I say, um, it's a printed label, which hasn't, which has been cut funny and not right there, but at least it's in the screwed shell. But like I said, the shell that it, this is gonna come in, it's going to be clear. It's been newly developed, so it can take the 90 tape. Apparently the clear shells they've got now don't take the 90 tape, but it is what it is. The tape in this, however, let's have a look. 
Let's just, uh, yeah, I shouldn't have wound these on really. I should have just kept these where they were. Let's take this one and take this one. Mm. If we look at the tape in this EQ Professional, it's not the same, but it's very close. It's darker than the last generation Max LUR. It's not quite as brown as the new Max LUR. But yeah, that's what the tape colours look like. And the J card is just a very simple J card. But don't get hung up on the aesthetics. I've been speaking to the company who's going to be releasing these. And they said, look, we've got UV printers. We've got, you know, we do everything in-house. If you think it looks bad, we can make something that, that looks better or different. So don't get hung up on the aesthetics. Don't use that as an excuse not to buy them if they're good. You know, because again, it looks like everyone's looking for an excuse to not buy a, a brand new cassette and just buy new old stock. So, first thing I did was, I've taken these cassettes, well, I've taken this EQ Professional, I've taken the new UR, and I've taken the last generation EU UR, and I've run them through a frequency sweep, and we can have a look at the results of them and see how it goes. Okay, so I use one of my new Marantz PMD520 duplication decks for this because I was curious to see how it performed in a frequency sweep. And that's what these lines here, the red and blue here, and as you can see, performed pretty well, pretty linearly, and it only dropped off the cliff really just before 20k, which is pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm pleased with that. So that's how it did. So I calibrated all the tapes up, and the first one is the UR... 0 2 which is the last line european so if we look at this it's hard to see but yeah it's it performs along these the only real difference is you know these are the mids where we can hear them best and these stick pretty close to the baseline and then these sort of dip below it down here it dips below and then it falls off a cliff and then we go to the ur 20 version which performs pretty much the same seems to be a bit higher here but uh, the big difference is, is around here if we look i mean the scale is like 0.5 of a decibel the left and right is out 0.5 of a decibel here you know um but no well actually it's 1.2 decibel it reckons about 1.3 decibel difference between left and right but that's where we've got it and then again it drops off the cliff and then we look at this new eq pro which sticks pretty well with everything else but then they have got massive separation between the left and right if we look here you know what i mean uh it's like one decibel there but at places like this if we go from here to here you know it's got nearly 2.8 decibel difference between the left and the right channel at high frequencies. Uh, is that right? You know, here it's it's a full 3 decibel. Is that right? Is that good? Is that bad? It's not as much as the max L. The max L's keep closer together, if you look here. But the EQ has a massive difference between left and right. But it's higher up here. So, again, I, I don't know what these graphs really give the say cassettes perform pretty much the same but some of you like them and that's how the frequency sweep is on these three cassettes so make what you like but i think the proof of the pie is always in the eating so it's time to fire up a deck get them calibrated get some music recorded on them let's see how they really perform <laughs> So I'm going to use the ZX9 for this because I want to do some biasing and comparing and contrasting. So let's start off with the last European UR. Now we've already seen that this has similar colour tape to the last Japanese UR and they're both Pangum so we can probably assume that they have the same tape in them but this has a different colour so let's just bias this one up. This doesn't have a different colour, the new one has a different colour I should say. So let's just, uh, okay, azimuth theme's alright, levels. Bias. 
And this is the thing again about this tape, the ubiquitous, and I know that there's lots of different versions, but look how stable it is. Look how stable that bias is. Look how stable that level is. Just, uh, I say it's just with level bit. The bias is stable, very stable. Yeah. The level is very stable. Azimuth isn't so stable. You see, it's making me a line now. Just, let's just tweak a little bit till it's happy. Right, Azimuth stable. Oh, come on. You're making me out to be a liar now. Right, Azimuth stable. Oh! Azimuth stable. Thank you. Level, stable. Bias, stable. So once you dial it in, it's a very stable cassette. Eventually, when you get the Azimuth right. <laughs> So like I say, I really rate these. I know that there's, there's, you know, we don't know what tape went in these, was it Max Allen and then they started clearing Acme out and I don't know, but every one of these I've had, it's always been the benchmark for an affordable cassette. Other cassettes have to be better than this, or at least as good as this around the same price to be viable alternative. So let's put in the new Japanese Max L U R and see how this compares when it comes to all the calibration. Okay, the azimuth seems stable. Levels, levels are a bit higher, so we can drop this a bit. Bias is quite different, we're gonna have to give it some. So look. So it is a different tape formulation, we can sort of see there, but that's stable, that's stable, and that's stable. Goody gumdrops. Okay, so let's see how it sounds with some music on it. So I'm now going to record some more Candy Apple Blue. Check out their album, Powers Activate. It's one I've grown to love after duplicating it several times for them. And this is my favourite track on the album. This is called can't stop thinking of you and this is the juno dreams remix so let's have a couple of minutes of this and see how this you are compares well not compares but see just see how it sounds with music on it so let's go I said the most important thing you can invest in if you're into cassettes is a good deck. That could be the deck. But didn't that sound fantastic? That sounded fabulous. 
I'll stack the sound of that up with any classic D U R H F formulation. That sounded really good. And if this is indeed a new production, yeah, it's good things coming. I hope it is. I hope it is. I wish they'd answer me, but on the face of it, yeah, these sound great. Don't look great, but they sound great. Right, let's go over to the EQ Professional. Now, we know this is a new production. Well, at least I hope this is a new production, and that's what's in here, not some super tape, but we'll soon see. Let's bias this up. Let's just, uh, out of interest, you know, just see how it compares with the Max L U R. Okay, Azimuth needs tweaking, but different tape, different shell. Okay, Azimuth is stable. Levels are higher. Let's turn the levels down a bit. Bias needs uh, tweaking. Okay, not quite as stable as you are. You know, it's, it's flickering, it's not quite as stable, but it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of the things. It's there, the levels are there, the azimuth is there. Oh, the azimuth needs tweaking again. <laughs> right. Oh. Right, are you staying? Good. Azimuth, levels, bias. Right, we're good. So, let's continue with Candy Apple Blue and see how this compares to the Max L U R and if, hope on hope, this is a brand new Chinese production tape that isn't Dropout City and sounds well. Let's see. What do you make of that one? Uh, okay, my thoughts are this. It's decent, it's usable, I've heard a lot worse, and it's certainly better than any modern Chinese production that I've heard. You know, the House of Technology stuff, or the tapes you get off Alibaba and Wish, or them on tapes, well, the old ones anyway. But, you know, maybe it's me being ultra critical. I'm listening through AKG headphones and analysing. Didn't sound as good as the Maxell. I could sense tiny dropouts in it, but it had a full bodied sound to it. And that's good. That's good. Hmm. There will never be a brand new Type 2. I've said it before, I'll say it again, but those of you new coming to it, there will never be another brand new Type 2. One, 
If it's pure chrome, the process was already expensive and nobody makes the pure chrome particles anymore. And nobody is going to invest in making them. Cobalt doping, environmental issues, and it needs to be, again, developed from scratch. And the market isn't there. I don't think the market is there, really, for brand new Type 1s. But, in the case of the EQ Professional, they would need the tape for duplication purposes. So why not sell a few just because they can. The Max LUR, is it a new tape? I don't know. Is it just using up remnants of what Pangong have and keep churning out for the Japanese market? Who knows? But this is the benchmark new cassette. At least, you know, the <laughs> in Europe, this is still the benchmark. And in North America as well, actually. But uh, will we get these? don't know. Apparently Max How Europe sa uh, says they have no uh, desire to import these and sell them. I mean, you know, getting these from Japan, I've got to say a big thank you to Mark. You might know him as the man behind Retrocore. Bing! He's got a new channel set up, Retrocore AV, where he's going to be reviewing all the Japanese cassettes. I'm not going to be reviewing because I don't live in Japan and he does and he can get hold of them. So uh, thanks again for sending me these, Mark. Much appreciated, fella. And yeah, I mean, a lot of you are always going on about Axia tapes. I ain't got any Axia tapes. I never sold them in Europe and I ain't buying any from Japan anytime soon. But I'm sure that Mark will be doing some Axia tapes. So keep an eye on his channel, subscribe to it, and I'm sure... You've got all your Japanese delights from there. So thanks again for getting me these, Mark. But bottom line is, I got some of these for the shop just because I like to get new tapes in and give some of you regulars a chance to try it out. And they sold out pretty quickly. And they were sold at my cost price, which was £5 a tape. Well, £4.99 a tape after I'd paid for the tapes, which worked out at around £2.30 each, buying them from Amazon Japan then adding the shipping on top and the taxes, they work out £5 each. So are they a viable alternative to the ones you can probably get for a quid regularly? Don't know, because I've always said these are decent tapes. The ubiquity says they're not, but if these were hard to find and expensive, people's perception of them would be that they're a lot better than they actually are now. But that sounded really, really good to me. As good, like I say, as a classic D HF or UR entry level ferric. Very good. Will we ever get them in Europe? Probably not. These again, these are a step up from the uh, sorry, the Chinese tapes we're getting on Alibaba, Wish, etc. at the moment. These are not dropout city. These have nice dark tape and nice smooth finish on them. You gotta think, I was listening through studio headphones very intently at these and noticing slight dropouts. Would you notice it if you're listening to it on your regular stereo through the hi-fi? Probably not. Would you listen to it, would you find them if you listen to it in your car, in the car hi-fi? Probably not. I was being ultra critical, but we saw in the graphs, these perform well in the graphs, they sound well, they have a full body sound, you can bias them up. The question is, what's the price gonna be on them? Because if these are going to be significantly more expensive than these, then this is the market because everyone's going to go, oh, I won't buy this because I can buy this for cheaper. You've got to know the market. And I hate to say this tape, people, but a lot of people are into cassettes because of the low entry point and the ability to get cassettes cheap if you're not bothered about getting cassette, you know, collector quality cassettes. You're not bothered about second hand. You don't bother about brand. You just want decent cassettes to tape on. The likes of the UR and the FE and the D are still readily available at a good price. And that's why I found new cassettes when I get them in. I get a few for people who want to try them because people are curious, but they don't make long-term purchases of them. As like I say, the fact that I've got loads of splicing captures sitting downstairs in my warehouse and we ain't selling. They sold at the start because they were new, people were curious. They don't sell no more. So I wish them well with these. Like I say, get a bit of a nicer design. I mean, just something simple. And in fact, hang on a sec. 
Here's an example. Here's one that I knocked up myself for my weekly mix. You know, I designed the J card myself. Nice and simple. And like I said, the tape itself, it's, it's cheaper than actually the full page sticker on that. Just, just put one sticker on the bottom, made that out of silver file, put a sticker at the top. And people have said this looks better. And yes, it is mimicking a, a 1986 HF when I did that. And the actual base tape on that is a Sky Super Ferret. But uh, yeah, get the design sorted out on this. And if it can be sold as a C90 at around about the £2 mark, you're going to be onto something there because it is a decent cassette. But like I say, Type 2, forget about it. The market isn't there for a Type 2. No one's going to make the investment. So we should be thankful at least that we have people making cassettes like these. And that's all there is to it. Enjoy what you got. Or hoover up these because you want to speculate. I know there's a lot of these right now and you can get them relatively cheaply. But give it a few years after these have long disappeared off the shelves. And these are going to be looked at as the last decent cassette made because they are good quality the 90s good quality and they're fairly fresh so people won't have the worry about them going moldy and going off and once they're off the shelves you just watch the price of these creep up i reckon within the next three years you'll be lucky to get one of these for less than five pound a cassette at which point stuff like this might start playing am i going to be wrong in that who knows? It'll take you five years to find out. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this was useful. And like I say, I will do a follow up on these when I get some that are bought for not me, for somebody else, so I can verify that this actually is the real tape in there and not a super tape. Well, it didn't sound like a super tape, but you know what I mean. Not a tape that's been put in for my purposes. So, happy taping, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.